wananchi wa Garissa shida yetu ni kitambulisho. Kitambulisho watoto wetu hawapati kitambulisho. The challenge that we have in Garissa is to do with the identity card. The youth are jobless because of identity card. People in in uh, border communities especially the Somalis are facing because for you to access an identity card I don't think it's it's even supposed to be having processes like vetting. It's supposed to be something that you're a Kenyan, you have your mother's birth certificate, you have your birth certificate, you have your parents to be the guarantees that you're born in Kenya. So you have the right we to be a, a Kenyan citizen. We have a big problem in this place. When it will ever be resolved, only God knows. You know, as Somali Kenyans, we're being treated as second class citizens. <coughs> and it's one of the things that are actually a major, major problem here. For you to get an ID card here, it doesn't matter whether you have been a retired civil servant or a civil servant or your father was a civil servant or a military general, you get a lot of problems getting ID cards here. I have to check this in nature. This one, this one. So all these have to play a, a certain role. Then this one. After this, I have to check this one. So that this fingerprint is here. This one. This is mother, left bank for this one. Then this one. For this, these are for elders who recognize this person that is a Kenyan. Isn't it? Left right, and then uh, second last is this uh, minutes. Uh, minutes number. This reflects the number in that book of which it must accompany this document to the road. Then after that one, my final chief is the two signatures of the assistant, the, the signature of our assistant chief and the seal of the chief. This is computerized. That is, you can see in the robis. Uh, you ask me the process of ID. ID starts with registration. Applicants come with their parents. The chief identifies them, confirms that the, the, the applicant and the parent are genuine, and then he registers them. After registration, uh, it takes time. It takes time for them to be vetted, to, for them to reach that process of vetting. Because in the sub county, we are uh, 15 locations. So it, it, the system is rotational. For when it comes to you, the next time it comes back to you is after a year and a half. The last time I did vetting was August 2016. During that time, uh, the previous time I did vetting was September 2015. So the next process, when it will come to me back again, if it continues, it goes continuous, is uh, September 2017. So that's why we will be having, we will be getting a backlog of a lot of applicants because of that long duration awaiting the system. Process. Actually, it's a long process in Garissa or in Northeastern region, unlike the other parts of the country. Because here, for you to get an ID, you have to be known by your chief or elders. Then uh, after that one, you will be registered. or put on a list by a, by a chief of your area, of that location. Then after that, we will constitute a committee um, chaired by me. And then uh, my secretary is always NRB, registration office. And then um, it constitute also committee members, the NIS, the CID, uh, the, and the elders, and now they are not So it's always a process that we have to allocate a, a span of one week, most probably. Yeah. Nobody Seven. has not faced any challenge. Bring this paper, bring your grandfather's certificate, bring your screening card, bring this, bring that. It is a hectic problem. And then it takes months. The minimum you can get as a Kenyan Somali for you, and coming from Northeastern Province and Garissa County for that matter, the minimum you can get an ID card is four, five months.
Uh, I think uh, what has hindered mostly is the fact that uh, Garissa County is hosting the refugee camps in Garissa. And uh, because we are hosting and uh, we are Somalis, we are somehow denied our right for the good work we are doing in terms of humanitarian by supporting the refugees. It is a UN convention in the refugee that we are supposed to host refugees and yet it is that that has made us not get access to, refugee, to ID cards. Being a boundary, a country that has borders with Somalia, it's also another effect on why the youths are not getting the IDs. So it is the responsibility of the government of Kenya to come up with strategies that are unique and only address the issues of ID cards in northern Kenya. I know it's not only in Garissa, but it's also in Wajia, it's also in Mandera. But Garissa is more affected because of the fact that uh, the Somalis intermingles around and there are many refugees in this area. Many opportunities are coming by day, but uh, lack of identification, they can't access those opportunities. Being uh, among the opportunities that came with uh, the youth fund and our youth in Garissa cannot access just because they, they lack very vital document, which is identification card. And uh, this issue has come uh, so many times. The people have even demonstrated, the residents have demonstrated up to the authority, but uh, it seems uh, all those cries are being uh, directed to unresponsive, unresponsive, Tafadhali watoto wamesoma shule tumesomesha watoto tumehangaika na watoto na wabati kazi ajili ya kitambulisho. Tunaomba kitambulisho. Hiyo tu ndio maneno yangu leo. Sina shida nyingine kwa serikali, shida yangu, shida yetu watu ya Garissa mimi naongea mdomo ya Garissa mzima. Watu ya Garissa mzima ndio mimi naongea. Juu ya Garissa mzima si peke yangu. Tuko na shida sana tubate kitambulisho. This is actually one of the yeah. things that triggers young people to go away. The attitude of the Kenyan government towards the Kenyan it's Somali due is to this terrible. Data has made the youth to become idle, and it is because of that that these youths now end up joining other things, other things like joining the militia groups, engaging in drugs, engaging in violences, and all that. If I would share my story, at the age of 18, every person is supposed to get an identity card to show that you're a Kenyan. So as usual, I went to my uh, native homeland to apply for my identity card. The first thing you usually go through vetting, which is not something that is allowed. After the process of vetting and uh, being not much familiar with my ethnicity and my tribe, it, br it brought me, and my funny name, it brought me some, some problems. So there is, there is this thing, if the mze in the area doesn't know you, you're first of all even not allowed to come in to the vetting room. So after several hassles I was allowed, I applied, I gave out my documents, and uh, the committee now started doubting, are you uh, bred here, are you born here, your father, does he stay here? After being asked several questions, I was able to answer right, and my details were taken. Then I thought after just the, the way the Constitution says it won't take long for me to get my identity card, but I had to wait for close to two years to access my identity card. For these two years, I would not access all the, the first thing is freedom, freedom of movement. With the government imposing curfew and uh, Somali society having a lot of problems, definitely moving around became difficult for me. Traveling from Nairobi to Garissa, is from Garissa to Nairobi was also an issue. So I tried all means. I, I took uh, the identity card team or the people who are supposed to be issuing me with IDs, the registrars, or I went to the offices and claimed for my identity card and they all said, it's not only you. People have waited for close to three years, four years. So you're lucky if you're not even in the refugee data. The other day they actually <coughs> tried to bring us the passport, and it didn't take one year. It was close. The passport was shifted back to Nairobi. We have got old men who have to go to Mecca and go to Hajj. 
You know, these old men suffer when they go to Nairobi. Some of them have never seen Nairobi. They are camel herders. But they have to go and do the Islamic obligations of going for pilgrimage. And then they have to shuttle between Isli and Nyayo House. And in the process, they get knocked by vehicles. So we complained about this. Uh, uh, and we were brought uh, the passport here. Suddenly for the government to close because of security problems. We don't know when we shall ever get this issue of marginalization. Like I said, we are patriots. We have this country at heart. We are prepared to die as Kenyans, but the Kenya government will never, never. They will always look at you as a second class. Oh, you can say whatever you want to say. Like this is an institutionalized discrimination. This is institutionalized. They will only look, actually they'll judge you by the color of your skin and the type of hair you have on your head and nose. If you have length, no long nose, long hair, soft hair, then you are a Somali. And you have to be actually vetted, second class citizen. You go through a rigorous, it doesn't matter whether you are born in Kiambu or you are a Somali. Even in Kiambu, they cannot, they'll tell you go to Garissa to go and get your ID card. Your parents are in there, your grandparents the, are there. The Maasai lands borders Tanzania, uh, the Luo lands borders uh, Uganda, and they are not having that problems that Somalis in Garissa have, Somalis in Mandera have, Somalis in Wajia have. I think. This is a kind of uh, segregation. We are we are somehow uh, discriminated against us, and uh, and uh, we feel that uh, the government is not honest about the issue of ID cards for We're Somali having a great Kenyans. problem, and uh, it's not only me. There are several youth who have the same problem, and it's something we should address as quick as possible. We are all citizens of Kenya, and we want to feel we are part of Kenya. The committees that are vetting the youths for ID cards should have youth representative. It is something I will, will take up as an activist. I will take up as an aspiring member to fight for the rights of the youths to ensure that uh, youth representation in the committees of the ID cards are there. Because it is them who know each other. It is them who have schooled together and it is them who can differentiate the refugees and differentiate the Kenyan Somalis. So we need to have representation of youth in the committees.